Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Strange Love Live Tech. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And this evening, I have to make sure I get this right, because I'm going to quote the Silicon Florist. Tonight's special guest is the Emperor of RSS, VP of Content Development at Read Write Web, and just all around nice guy, Marshall Kirkpatrick. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Marshall. Hi, Cammie. How are you this evening? Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah? Yeah, it's an honor to get to check out the show. It's well, a beautiful setup you got. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here. So let me ask you a couple of questions. One very specifically, you are, and I'm going to make sure I get it exactly right again, you are the VP of Content Development and one of the, the bloggers at Read Write Web, which will from this point on in the show be referred to as RWW. Whew. Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that is my job title. Uh, it's I been... hope so. I got it off your site. <laughs> cool. I, I was a little confused about it yesterday myself. Um, it's I've been doing that for only about two or three months now, doing the working there full time and a VP of something. I just like to tell people that I'm the VP of a blog. Mm-hmm. That usually gets a lot of laughs. So that's what I was curious about when I saw that you were the VP of a blog. I said, wow. What on earth does the VP of blog do in well, a VP capacity? I understand yeah. what you do in a blogging well, capacity. You're one step away from the president. <clears throat> one heartbeat away, mm-hmm. right? From... Yep. Bad <laughs> joke. Okay. No, that's okay. Uh, luckily, the, the yeah, the boss is all the way across the, the world in Read Write Web. Uh, he's in New Zealand. So uh, there's no, no threat of a coup or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oh, you know, I I do. Uh, I think that what that title means is just that I I spend more time uh, helping make decisions mm-hmm. about the site and helping it grow. And uh, since I've been working in that capacity, uh, the first thing I did was think up a whole bunch of different ideas uh, for different spin-off sites or different ways that we could make the site more interesting or uh, new kinds of content. Mm-hmm. that we could offer. That's the content manage- management part? Yeah. 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 So we've started with my first idea, uh, which was the Read Write Web Job Wire, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, a new site where we write about people's new jobs. Which uh, is much nicer than writing about who's left. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what we hope. We hope there's a lot of good reasons for people to read it. Um, we're still working on building up the traffic mm-hmm. uh, for it. We're, we're making a bunch of changes all the time. We just hired... Uh, the first member of our internship program, a mm-hmm. wonderful guy named Doug Coleman. Hi, Doug. Hello, Doug. Yeah, hey, Doug. Yeah. So Doug has been rocking out with uh, at least eight, sometimes ten uh, posts every day. Wow. About new jobs that people have gotten. Where are the the jobs located? Are they, you know, just all over the world, high tech? Yeah, they're, uh, they're tech companies or media companies. Uh, a lot of them do end up being... Uh, marketing and PR type jobs that have a an online component. So that's a higher profile presence within the company. Yeah, yeah. People, uh, for example, last week we wrote an article um, talking about how uh, we've written a, about a number of different people lately who have gotten jobs as online community managers mm-hmm. uh, for different businesses. Uh, it's becoming a really common job for people to get. Or, you know, relatively so. It's Mm -hmm. becoming increasingly common. Uh, So jobs kind of like that. And we also write about engineers and executives at at tech companies and things like that. And all over the world, they they tend to come up in the U.S. uh, right now. But we've written um, about some European job changes and some in India. And and we've got pretty good international readership. So we'd love it if people would send us more emails saying, I just, you know, got a new job and... South Africa. So, so just to clarify, this is not a job board per se. This is so. These are jobs that have already been filled. Yeah, uh, I think I, I'm thinking about renaming it mm-hmm. uh, because that's what people assume, uh, and I, I think it, it may have not been the best name that I came up with. So, if anybody's got any suggestions, uh, throw them into the chat room. That'd be awesome. But this is this is uh, to ins. Um, 
somehow inspire and and kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, grow the job market out there, especially in tough times. I mean, it, how, how does that work with what you're doing with you know the job wire board and you know what's happening in the economy right now? I mean, how, what's the linkage there? Well. Uh, there is some that wasn't really the original intention. Uh, this is something that I've been working on for probably the last six months or so and, and just decided to, or I've been thinking about it for the last six months or so and just decided to turn it into a new site now. Uh, but given the, the current economic situation, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it can, it's a, a site of good news, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also a site where you can see what kinds of jobs people are being hired into mm -hmm. um, a lot of people may not have have thought of of trying to get a community manager job for example um, or they may not they may be uh, interested to know that a whole bunch of mobile companies are doing a lot of hiring right now um, but but we think that there's a lot of different reasons for people to read the site you know, I think people's jobs are interesting yeah so I like to hear about people's new jobs uh, other folks are interested to know when someone leaves one company and goes to another company that there might be a position available at the first company. And we think that there's probably some people who, who do things like sales and business development communications uh, for whom it's useful to know who a new contact uh, is. Mm -hmm. at a, you know, for example, we wrote about a, a fellow who left the salesforce.com sales team and went and joined this little uh, recommendation technology startup called Baynote um, a little while ago. And he probably knew a bunch of people when he was at Salesforce. And we hope that, you know, people will see that. And, and he told us that people emailed him actually after we wrote about it and said, thanks for, um, you know, congratulations on your new job, et cetera. So we're hoping maybe, you know, people will say, so that's the new salesperson to, to connect with over at that I little recommendation company. I didn't think of it from that. I mean, that is a very good use of it. I didn't think of it from that perspective. It, it strikes me that it's like almost like job mentoring through example, so to speak. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we think there's a lot of different ways that people can find value uh, from it. Um, and we're, we're hoping that we're gonna do a lot more to support it by uh, increasing uh, cross-promotion from the main Read Right website uh, to send people over to JobWire, like we just added a link in the RSS feed, stuff like that. But, uh, but kind of thematically, you know, on, on Read Write Web, we write about the, the read and write web, you know, the, the new internet uh, where people don't just consume passively, uh, but we can also produce content and, and publish. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has become such a big deal now that, uh, that there's a whole industry of people working to support it. Uh, to make the technologies available, and and so there's a bunch of jobs in and, that sector. And because of that, you've also added several new authors this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've uh, yeah we've added a, a bunch of folks. Uh, uh, Rick Tarosi, who uh, we're blessed with here in the studio audience tonight. <laughs> in fact, uh, is I, I believe he's our newest hire on uh, on Read Write Web, the primary site. Oh, Lidija. Yes. Uh, yeah, Lidija. Uh, I, I, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Um, it, she's from Australia, but lives in the Bay Area now. Mm -hmm. um, and she just came on to write uh, weekends and at events. She was our first person in the Bay Area, uh, which is which is pretty trippy. Which is, yeah, really very odd, considering it's a tech site. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the interesting thing, especially you coming from from a uh, tech crunch is that, you know, this, this is a site that up until now really hasn't had any representation in the Bay area yet. You're very successful writing about technology. So, uh, it, I mean, was that by design or was that just how it kind of fell out uh, when read, write web was started? Well, it was started by Richard McManus uh, four years ago uh, in New Zealand. And man, he, he just started it from where he was and as he started hiring folks you know I, I believe his his first hire as a writer was Josh Catone who lives in Maine uh, and we've got people now in in Florida and uh, oh geez we're, we've actually got a lot of people in Portland now which is pretty awesome uh, but I I it's one of the things that I'm really proud of uh, that the site has been able to be as successful as it has so far writing about Silicon Valley in large part uh, without being there, 
I think it's kind of inspiring that it says, you know, you can write about tech, and it's not even just writing about Silicon Valley at all. You know, we, we love it when we get to write about Portland companies. Do you think that the bulk of it is still going on in the Silicon Valley, though? I mean, is that the bulk of what you're writing about? Um, I don't know whether it's the bulk of it. A, a disproportionate amount of it. Yeah. Sure, yeah. But um, you know, I wrote about a Canadian company today, and uh, and then I wrote about... You recently wrote about a um, an app developer, I think, who was just uh, selling his 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 app, and he, what he hit the like hundred k mark now. Yeah, that guy was is awesome. Um, the guy who makes Balsamic. Balsamic is this uh, Adobe Air uh, mock-up creator. If you're doing website design, you know it, it's uh, his wife drew all the components. I guess she's a graphic designer. She drew the components of a website, and you can just kind of drag and drop them and say, let's put a search bar here and a logo there. No, let's switch those around. Uh, and then you can present it to people. And uh, and he sells it for 79 bucks, and it is really, really good. And uh, and within, oh, so when he started his company, he said on his blog, I'm gonna open up my, my books to everybody, and uh, as well as a lot of my development process. And, uh, and he developed a real following because of that, because a lot of people were curious to see how it was going and, and just to learn from his experience. And he just announced last week that at just about five months into the business, he had passed uh, 100 grand in revenues, 79 bucks at a time, wow. selling software in these days when people say that everything has to be free. Yeah. And wow. He, and he's not uh, he's not in the Valley, is he? He's no. somewhere else. He's- yeah. Where is he? I You know, I blogging can be such a harried thing that, uh, you know, 10 minutes later after I posted that, I thought, where does that guy live? I've got to figure that out. Oh, well, you know, I, it, hopefully the post is good and, and it, it worked out pretty good. Um, but it, there was, you know, some other crazy news story coming up they had to chase after. And, uh, but yeah, I'd love to know where uh, Balsamic is headquartered. So over the years, you've written at a lot of different blogs. Oh, I think he's getting a whispered yeah. answer. What? San Francisco. Oh, it's San Francisco. <laughs> okay, so it is oh. Bay Area. So that breaks that oh, theory. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Peldy is his name. His, Peldy is his first name. I can't remember what his last name is. Yeah. So over the years, you've written at a lot of different blogs. You've had a lot of different positions. And I always wonder, just I don't even write um, a tech blog. I, just my own blog that I write, I don't remember half of what I've written. I don't remember a tenth of what I've written. I can't even remember. And every once in a while, I go, oh, wait, I think I wrote something about that. How do you keep track of what it is that you've already talked about? Well, in the short term, it's really hard to remember. Mm-hmm. Um, I often, at the end of the day, can't remember what I wrote uh, earlier that day. Mm-hmm. Um, but it gets a little easier once a couple of days have gone by. And uh, and I also put a, a link to uh, the search results page in Google. If you, if you go into Google and say site colon... Is it colon or semicolon? I always get the two mixed semicolon, up. Semicolon. So, so the one without the comma at the bottom, you know, the, Just here, the two here comes little more dots. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I write for a living. I can't keep those straight. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a semicolon. Is it? Anybody what? know? A semicolon? Two dots is a colon. colon. Oh, it's a colon. Okay, so oh, it's wrong. a colon. Okay. Yeah. So you go site colon and then put a link uh, like HTTP slash... Uh, colon slash slash readwriteweb.com, uh, then everything that you put after that will search just inside of that that page. And so... Uh, I'm glad I have this recording. <laughs> yeah, it's a really useful little deal. So what I have done uh, is uh, I went into Google and did just that uh, without any search terms and did the search and got to the page, you know, that, that has, you know, no search terms beyond that and then dragged the link down to my toolbar um, and uh, now whenever I want to search Read Write Web Archives, I just click that link, or click that little button on my, my favorites bar, and it brings me up to a Google search results page already filled in with the box, you know, site, Read Write Web, and then I type in whatever words I want to see, you know, I want to search against. And I do that all day long. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I don't know if I'd spend all day doing it, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's actually why you won't be leaving tonight until you hook that all up for us so we can make <laughs> oh, sure yeah, we get there, the... Oh, uh, yeah, there's that, and, uh, you know, it's related to... There, there's so many simple little Google things in particular that can make such a big difference. How about the uh, talk you gave uh, at WordCamp oh, wait, uh, about the on. RSS? I need to take a big, deep breath first. Okay. 
When when you gave your talk at WordCamp, I was very excited. About a week before WordCamp, I went through and I looked at all the talks and I did my schedule and I tried to pick which which ones I wanted to go to. And I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to see what Marshall is saying because this sounds like stuff that I really need to know. And this can be really helpful for our sites. And cool. then I went and I sat down and I found a tiny, tiny spot on the floor because every single person uh, was trying to sandwich into the one tiny room to listen to you talk. And I maybe understood f- maybe five minutes. And then I was able to, you know, pick out of thin air a few things that you said. And then I just sat there like this for a little while and said, geez, I'm really glad that he's got all these notes up on the internet. And then with my typical fantastic follow through, I went and looked at them for five minutes and then, oh, I flitted off to do something else. Yeah, yeah that was that was <laughs> fun. Oh, well, thanks for thanks for being excited about it. Um, yeah, if if we could have had that conversation, you know, with and not been in such a rush, mm-hmm. it all would have been way more understandable. There was so much information there, and you were packed into such a short period of time um, that I was just kind of like, God, we could just have a, a seminar for hours on RSS, and maybe I could understand. So explain to me, in very simple terms, how an RSS feed works. Well, let's see how to describe it. Um, the, the way that I would describe it is, uh, from a, a user's perspective, uh, if we are, are interested in, um, like today I gave a, I gave a little webinar presentation to a, a nonprofit group in New York that does, um, healthcare technology and civil liberties advocacy Mm -hmm. and and we said okay here are 10 websites about healthcare technology and civil liberty stuff Um, and uh, instead of going and visiting each of them uh, each day to see if there's new content there uh, instead we can grab their RSS feed put it in a a special program or an outlook uh, if if you're an outlook person um, a, a special program called an RSS reader that will go out and check for us to see if there's new content. Uh, every time we log in, it'll go and check all the pages that we're subscribed to. And if there's anything new, it'll bring it back into one central place where we can read it or click out to the site. Uh, okay, so as a user, that's how RSS works for you. What I'm trying to determine, because I've been using, before I even knew what RSS was, I was using an RSS reader to get the blog posts that I wanted. You're talking about doing all those crazy hacks to your I'm blog and your about website and using pipes as and a, all that. As a, as a blog use, as a blog owner, as a uh-huh. product creator, how can you use RSS to benefit you? So the kind of the reverse of it, the other, okay. the back yeah, end. Yeah, I'm of sorry it. if I didn't mean to. No, no, I, I wanted. Simple. No, I wanted both sides. Cool. You perfect. Awesome. Um, Will the one of the ways that I explain it is that that by allowing, you know, as a publisher, when you allow. That's the word I was looking for. Publisher. <laughs> when you allow your your visitors to subscribe to an RSS feed for your site, uh, what it does is enable some percentage of your your casual website visitors to to establish a persistent relationship with you by receiving updates to your site automatically Mm -hmm. so you know at at, uh at read write web for example you know we if we write a post that uh, gets a bunch of stumble upon traffic then we hope that some tiny percentage of those people, and we'd love it if it was more than a tiny percentage, but realistically, some tiny percentage of those people, uh, when they come by, uh, A, they like the article that got on StumbleUpon, but B, uh, they'll stop and look around a little bit, Mm -hmm. and they'll say, um, they won't say, you know, and then they'll grab our our RSS feed um, so that uh, they might never think about us again, or they might not ever, they might not think about us for a week uh, until... Uh, but they'll be receiving all of our articles automatically mm-hmm. in their RSS reader, and uh, it's just a little hook to reach out and and uh, and maintain that connection with people, without requiring that they come back and visit your site. So that's one level of it. But maybe you mean like even crazier stuff. I think it's about hooking the hooks. Yeah. Like when I created, um, uh, you know, there's NaNoWriMo, 
There's Nano. What's the blog? Nano Podmo. Well, no, 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 the blog. No, Nano Pomo. Pomo, no, whatever. Nano blo- blo- And then they created a uh, Nano Blow Me Pomo, I don't know. right? Yeah. Um, which is a national national. Pod- so there's National Novel Writing Month, National Blog Posting Month, and, and National Podcast Podcasting Posting month. month. So I thought this would be interesting. Why I don't know. So I because you're a glutton for punishment. So I was like looking for a quick and dirty way to post podcasts on a daily basis for the Nano Podmo or whatever. And since I don't have keys to the WordPress Kingdom, since Cami hasn't given me those. Um, not, not that I would know what to do. I probably drive the WordPress right into the tree, right? Like, like Dad's Ferrari. But, you cannot have my keys. Um, so I just went up to the blogger account, started posting the podcasts with the you know with the MP3 links, and then found out that I put the feed burner, for feed burner into, uh, you know, point the feed burner to the RSS feed of the blogger feed. Or the other way around. Yeah, I couldn't, of I couldn't feed. figure out how to do it with blogger with with with, blo- with the blogger feed. It wasn't working. But as soon as I created the feed burner feed pointing to the blogger site, then it worked in iTunes and worked with the enclosures and everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it was kind of a feed of a feed. Yep. So it was like that kind of thing that. Um, and you know, I'm not sure exactly why. I, I probably could have figured it out later, but you know, I was trying to do this like late at night in like a half an hour. So, I mean, it's like things like that, like being able to create feeds of feeds or aggregate feeds of feeds. I mean, it, mm-hmm. is that what you're basically doing, like with Yahoo Pipes and, and those types of things? Yeah, where there's, you really there's all kinds of different pipes, tools where you can uh, you can do stuff like that. And every time you you try and or succeed in doing something like that, you learn a little bit better about how the tools work. And then you get excited about things that you probably wouldn't have ever thought were possible uh, had you not kicked the tires a little bit. So maybe um, maybe it'd be helpful if I told you a brief story about something I did last night. Yes. So uh, last night I, I was getting ready for this uh, thing I did this morning, and uh, and I I came back across this really interesting phenomenon uh, in the medical blogging world. There's this thing called the Grand Rounds, uh, which is essentially a blog carnival. If you're familiar with the mm-hmm. blog carnival, where where uh, periodically different blogs take turns. It's like a traveling blog. Yeah, it's like yeah. a traveling topic almost. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in this case with the and everybody does it differently. But the the grand rounds is really successful. It's been going for 4 years and uh, every week a different uh, medical blogger, a lot of them doctors, will uh, someone will take responsibility for writing a post uh, that includes links out and sometimes summaries of the best blog posts uh, written by other doctors. Mhm. So it's a it's a really neat time saver you know for everybody else uh that week to just go into that one place but um i I looked at this a a couple of times there's no rss feed where you can subscribe to get uh you know these posts each week because they're on different blogs and there's i I tried like every way i could think of Um, so what i ended up doing was uh taking the there was a google calendar where it said you know this week uh dr so-and-so is going to host the blog this week you know uh a lot of them have, you know, real, there a lot of them are, have a lot of personality and creativity to the whole things, mm-hmm. um, and so I I subscribed to that in my Google Calendar, and I've been going then uh, each week when a new one's posted, I just load it up in my browser and then I bookmark it in Delicious, with the tag Grand Rounds Feed. And Delicious has publishes an RSS feed for every tag. Uh, both, you know, at an individual user's tag and, you know, universally uh, you can get an RSS feed for everything tagged podcast, for example, or anything tagged Portland mm-hmm. um, by anybody. Um, so I took, but I took the RSS feed of all the items that I tagged, Grand Rounds feed, uh, and I ran that through FeedBurner mm-hmm. so that then I could uh, give people one link that they could subscribe to and I could change the source link if, if somebody else wants to take over for me, which would be great. Um, Someone else, please take over for yeah, me. <laughs> but it won't take it won't take very long. It'll take, it'll take like two minutes a week, something like that. Uh, and FeedBurner uh, gives you the option to allow email subscriptions. Mm. So then I made a blog post and said, okay, you know, medical bloggers, if you want, you know, this is something that I've wanted for a while and I've wanted to offer to other people. And if, if 
if you all want it, you know, here's one RSS feed that you can subscribe to by RSS or by email. And it's really just, you know, a bunch of links from Delicious. I hope my cousin's listening to this episode because she's a big medical blog reader. She's a medical blog. Yeah, I was just thinking, eventually it would be nice to make this even more end user friendly, like in a UI or something like that, where you can actually go out, maybe discover feeds or discover feeds that you already have on all your sites, you know, on your, maybe a blogger site or a a website that you have and says, hey, you know, you've got a feed here and then you can kind of drag and drop and put these things together. Like, you know, the end user UI. Are you talking about them suggesting things to you based off of your feed? Because Google did that and it pissed me off. (laughs) What would be both suggestion and then being able to manipulate that at a very high end user level? You know, both of those would be really nice, and and unfortunately, uh, I don't think it exists yet. You know, Yahoo Pipes is is close. Uh, you can do about a bajillion things with Yahoo Pipes. I I know how to do like three or four things uh, with <laughs> it, and it's changed my life. And I use it all the time. Um, but uh, even that. You know, when you look at it at first, it's not very friendly. Mm-hmm. It's it's in that class of tools where there's there's a bunch of things um, that that you know. I mean, I I try and play with this stuff as early as I can, uh, as fast as I can, and I write about it for a living. And yet, there's a bunch of these tools that totally scare me, and it takes me a year until I actually figure out. I figure out that that they're not really as difficult as mm-hmm. I thought they were. Because I don't have any programming knowledge or, or anything like that. So a lot of times I look at stuff and I'm like, oh, that's for developers. Mm-hmm. Um, but Yahoo Pipes is one of those where uh, Justin Kistner showed me uh, a couple of things that I could do with it. And uh, and just knowing what these two buttons were labeled and what would happen when I poked them um, just opened up a whole world of possibilities. That's how I like to learn things. I, I need to know two or three things and then... I can go ahead and but, but until you know those two or three things about any given topic, so intimidating. It's really intimidating. It is. Mm-hmm. Grease Monkey is another mm-hmm. another one that I thought Grease Monkey was just for developers, and uh, it involved scripts and was not for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, I don't know. I uh, honestly, like nine months ago, maybe I, I figured out that it's not complicated at all. It's really simple. As long as you know that one or two. Yeah, there's two buttons to push. Okay. Literally, you just you uh, you install a Firefox plugin, mm-hmm. just as like you would any other Firefox plugin, and then all the Grease Monkey scripts are just like it's just one more button to push. Uh, you, then it's just like a plugin inside of the plugin. So it's generated in the UI. Oh, it, it is. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you use the UI to generate the script. Is that correct? Uh, no, that's okay. that. Okay. So uh, that's how you use Grease Monkey as a consumer. And there are, if you want to program Grease Monkey scripts, uh, you know, that, that is another matter. But luckily there are lots and lots and lots of people who are able to work with JavaScript. And, and I don't think JavaScript is particularly difficult as stuff like that goes, but I don't mess around with it much. I, and I don't, I've never messed around with Grease Monkey scripts other than to use them. But just starting to use other people's uh, totally changes my use of the web. Like for example, I I uh, put in one the other day that lets me uh, scroll down to the bottom of a page, and it will automatically load up the contents of the next page. Uh, and I just scroll down, and it just keeps loading and scrolling and load like on 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 pages with logical pagination, like Twitter. That is very useful. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's just so smooth. Just keep on scrolling indefinitely, and it just keeps drop drop drop. So um, befo- I'm so glad I have this whole thing recorded and I can listen to. That's it right. Later. <laughs> oh, there's so much, and I recorded a, a screencast actually uh, called "How to Use Grease Monkey in Less Than Five Minutes." Oh how wow! To, how to start using Grease Monkey in less than five minutes? Is that on the Read Write web? Yep, great. It sure is. But if you just Google uh, Grease Monkey in five minutes, I'm sure it'll be the first result. Cool. Excellent. So before we go, um, I I know we're talking about a lot of cool, you know, Grease Monkey. I'd like to get a sense of what's knowledge. what's what's really got you jazzed right now in tech. Like, what's that story, either the thing you're working on or the thing you're thinking about uh, constantly? There's always something that, you know, we, we've got in our heads that we're like, wow, I want to know more about that, or I'm really excited about that. I want to, you know, dig into that more. What's going on? Well, uh, 
there's two things that are that are probably at the at the forefront of my brain right now about this stuff. Um, the first is something that that uh, a number of us talked about in the couple hours leading up to the show, and that's the new Google Search Wiki. It's just crazy. And you just uh, wrote a post on that. Yeah, I wrote a post on it before I could see it, which I hate doing. Actually, with a, a little uh, interview with uh, Ward Cunningham. Yeah, well. the, with the inventor of the wiki. Mm-hmm. That was pretty awesome. He just happens to live in Portland. Um, so I, I uh, called up Mark Dilley. Awesome. His coworker. You know, if, you, if you've never had Mark Dilley, you should have Mark Dilley on the show sometime. From Hello, Goddess. Mark Dilley. You should be on my show sometime. <laughs> oh, we will. We <laughs> will. It's awesome. Yeah, so it's crazy. It's just like it's a it's a it's not really a wiki for one thing. Now that I've looked at it, uh, but it's really interesting. It lets anybody post comments and then vote comments up and down on any links on a Google search result page. And it's also now numbering them. Yep. Which I don't know. I find kind of the first time I saw it, I was I don't know. I was taken a little aback. Oh, it's really and the and you start thinking about what this is going to look like later, and you know what are you going to do if somebody says something nasty on your page? They're, you're not going to do anything. You're going to vote it down at best. Yeah, you know stuff like that. But I I checked. Uh, you might you might be interested to know that as of at least an hour and a half ago, uh, there had been uh, 14 edits made to the search results for love. <laughs> if you Google love, and there uh, were only 12 for sex. Wow. So 14 edits to love and only 12 to sex. Yeah. Who'd have thunk it? That's kind of astonishing, actually. So, and, and that leads me to my next question. Oh, my gosh. You have questions, I do. Doctor. Marshall, is Google friend or foe? <gasps> that's, that's an awesome question. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think we should take a survey, and then we should comment on each other's answers and vote them up and down okay. and uh, with our implants uh, that were... I well that uh, honestly I swear when when the when the internet brain implant comes out it's gonna come from Google, uh, so they do great things. I and think they Google's scare me. my friend, but yeah, they're my scary friend that I think looks over my shoulder a little too much sometimes. When my uh, advertising is linked directly to my emails that I send to people. <laughs> but generally, you think uh, they're okay and they're doing good work now. I am. I wouldn't say that. I think they do some incredible things, uh, tech-wise. They probably do some really good things politically, uh, but you know, I mean, they have access to uh, a huge amount of the world's knowledge, a view from the sky, a view of the stars, a genetic map of a whole bunch of people, a view of your house from the street, yeah, that your one email, your IMs, your you know, that's that's not good. So. I, I agree with you. I, I like using their services, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, oh, my God, you know so much about me. It's hard to resist, though. Oh, Dr. Normal's playing the wrap it up music. Marshall, it was lovely having you on the show. It was wonderful Thanks. to talk about Read, Write, Web. I can still say it. Please join us next week when we're going to have the second annual Chaos Holiday uh, Lyric Contest. And we'll be joined by fellow Portland podcaster and so much more, Will Raddick. Have a great evening, everybody. After Hours coming up next.